I'd like to uh, welcome two of our favorite authors onto the stage, David Simon and George Pelicanos. Well, I'll, t I'll talk about how we met. I mean, I, I, the funny thing is, David and I grew up just really just two or three miles from each other. And we went to the same college, but I didn't know him at all. I'd never met him until uh, very, very close to when the show started, when he started with the show. And, um, and um, somebody close to David had given him one of my books, and he approached me at a uh, funeral for a mutual friend. And we were driving to the wake, and he offered me this uh, a job, writing a script for the first season. I didn't know anything about it, but I had seen The Corner, and I thought it was really extraordinary. And I had never seen anything like that on American television. So I, um, I knew that uh, whatever happened with it, it was going to be pretty good, and I knew David's heart was in the right place. So, uh, and I, I did it, and that's how I got, I got roped in. Yeah, I'll add to that by saying that um, a lot of people had actually independently given me George's books. Uh, uh, my girlfriend, now my wife, Laura, who uh, is a crime writer, and and came up with George. I guess you know they were they were doing a lot of events together. Their books were coming out at the same time. They were often uh, on tour at the same time. And she said, "There's this guy in Washington who's really writing a lot of the same stuff. He's 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 mining in the same he's mining the same load as you." And uh, I had the, having come from Washington, I had this Baltimoreans. Uh, Falsely, because I was a Washingtonian, I had this bias against Washington. What are they going to tell us about crime? You know, I mean, we, um, so uh, you know, Laura had told me, and then Carrie and Tholis, an HBO exec uh, who George had worked with and who I worked with on the corner, he sent me a copy of uh, The Sweet Forever, and I thought he sent it cold without a note, and I thought, man, Carrie's pissed off because the scripts are late. That's why you know he sent me. He found a book called The Sweet Forever. Like I didn't pay attention until finally. You know, Laura prevailed upon me and said, "You really have to read George." So that that was shortly before that funeral, and um, yeah, that was that was just before. Uh, I think I'd sold the pilot at that point. Right. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think a lot of the, a lot of what the Wire was dealing with thematically uh, is resonant in the post-industrial West. I think it works uh, for for people. You know, I mean. Listen, we weren't that prescient. We, we, when, when we started conceiving of the show, and when I had my first discussions with Ed Burns about it, uh, Enron and WorldCom were going on in America. They were sort of the outliers of, of this economic collapse, of this, this hollowness at the core of, of capitalism. Um, we knew there was some shit in the blood of, 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 the, of the society in that sense, that there was, there was a lot of... And, and I'd been through this... You know, I'd covered a police department where the, the crime stats were all cooked, and you know, Ed had been in a police department, uh, sorry, uh, uh, he'd been in the police department, but he'd also been in a school system where the, the test scores were all being cooked. And so there was, there was a lot of that in the ether that, that, we, that we could access. But what I think has happened is that, uh, you know, we were, it sounds vain, but I think we were right about a lot of stuff, you know, sh shocking ourselves as much as anybody. Um, and that a lot of the things that have happened since um, have made this really resonant. You know, this is not this is not just a hiccup in my country, of you know, of, of in terms of the death of work, and in terms of uh, you know, when, when Sabatka, when we wrote that line for Sabatka, um, we used to make shit here, build shit. Now we just put our hands in the next guy's pocket. That was five years ago. Um, but ultimately, that putting your hand in the next guy's pocket was the mortgage bubble. It was selling shit and calling it gold. And, and so I think we just got very lucky. I'm, I'm not saying we're that bright. I just think we were, we were onto something and, and, and we happen to be pulling it through a keyhole at the moment where something, so I think, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that it's re relevant everywhere, but I think, you know, for, for the UK and for us and for a lot of other places in the West, um, we all have the same worries. The, um, the new novel, The Way Home, is, is um a result of me working in juvenile prisons and, and adult prisons with just going out and talking to the guys and trying to teach reading or teaching a book or something like that. And I, I got interested in that in that whole uh, arena, you know, like that. But with something like, um, you know, a book like The Night Gardener, which was about police, was my police novel, I actually went in with the Homicides, uh, the Violent Crimes Division in D.C., and they, they let me in 
because of the show, they let me in. They would never let me in before. Uh, they didn't care that I was a novelist, but they, they, all of a sudden they cared that I was working on The Wire. And I think the reason the police liked the show so much, one of the reasons is that, you know, we always crapped on their bosses. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> they let me in, and um, I followed a case from the, from the day of the murder to the confession with everything in between, the, uh, going around the neighborhoods and trying to interview witnesses and so on. And that was a, that was a great experience. It wasn't, uh, a lot of what we do isn't about the details of the um, police procedure so much as it is. Uh, the really valuable thing for me there was, was sitting at a cop's desk, at a, at a homicide cop's desk, while he wasn't really around, and, and looking at what was on his desk, and looking at the pictures on the wall that he had ta taped up there. And uh, for example, he would have a, a victim, a homicide victim, uh, on a morgue slab right next to the picture of the guy's kids and, um, and then a picture of uh, like an icon of Jesus Christ or something like that. And that, that speaks a thousand words. So to get in, in on that situ situation was really valuable. Anyway, if that's it, thank you all for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.